the affirmations. Okay. We don't need to call a meeting order for this, but uh, for all of our uh, citizens staff that are listening in, uh, we've got National Public Works Week, and I'm going to quickly uh, kick it over to Jonathan Gano to give us kind of an update, and then I've got a quick proclamation to read. Jonathan. Happy to have the floor, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this is an annual celebration where we take uh, a week and, and take our, our chance to, to remind everybody of the, the vital infrastructure and services provided by public works professionals here in Des Moines. That's in the both public works and engineering departments working uh, day and night, sometimes around the clock in different duty positions at the wastewater treatment plant and public works proper and all day long in offices and, and now in homes and uh, trucks and vehicles spread throughout the community. Um, we're, we're pleased to have the opportunity to have the floor here to have uh, some official recognition from our council members. I know each and every one of you all uh, recognize and value the contributions of all of our public works professionals in both the engineering and public works departments. So I'm happy to be able to uh, have this kickoff of National Public Works Week with a formal proclamation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You bet. And Jonathan, before I read it in for all of us on the city council, uh, we want to thank you and your whole department and staff for the, uh, the week in, week out, 24 hours a day, whether it's snow, whether it's rain, whether it's floods, or it's just taking care of picking up uh, the, uh, the recycle and the garbage and whatever, every single week, every single day, you guys are on the front line and I just want to thank all of you for um, all the work that you do to help all of us as citizens of the city of Des Moines. So uh, thanks for being here, Jonathan, and, and making that statement. But I, I just wanted to, for all the council, we just want to thank you personally. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. All right. So our proclamation uh, quickly reads as follows. Uh, Public works personnel operate and maintain infrastructure and provide services essential for everyday life and economic growth and also provide leadership in floods, snowstorms, and natural disasters. And whereas the support of an and understanding uh, and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work services and maintenance programs, such as traffic, sanitation, sewers, streets, forestry, and wastewater reclamation. And whereas the protection and preservation of the area's natural resources for the benefit of future generations depends on the sustainability of these services and programs. And whereas the quality and effectiveness of these functions as well as their planning, design and construction is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of our public works and engineering officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff the Department of Public Works and Engineering are materially influenced by the people's attitudes and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now, I, the mayor of the city of Des Moines, on behalf of our city council and the citizens of Des Moines, do hereby proclaim the week of May 18th the 22nd of 2020 as the National Public Works Week. And in the city of Des Moines, I call on all of our citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing the city's public works and to recognize the contributions which public works and engineering officials make every single day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. And uh, with that, thank you very much to all of you and uh, uh, thank you for being part of our team. Now, Jonathan, you may think that uh, uh, magically the proclamation is going to appear in your hands and we'll have pictures taken <laughs> together, but that's not going to happen. We can we can work magic with Photoshop. Okay, good, good. All right. Um, Kay? Yes. Kay, are you on? Yes, I am. Uh, is there is there anybody on uh, with the Asian and Pacific uh, Islanders um, uh, group? 
I am not aware of someone. If you are on and you wish to speak, please raise your hand so I can unmute you. Uh, I don't. <laughs> it looks like you've got one hand up. There, there is one. All right. All right, you have the floor. New. No. Hello? Yes. Hello. <laughs> oh, yes. Hi. Thank you so much for, first of all, expediting this proclamation. It means so much to our community. I'm actually on a national um, call at the same time recognizing this event. And um, it's wonderful that Des Moines, Iowa is having, from a local standpoint, and being a part of this at a national level as well. And um, this is even more important for us, not just for our Asian American Pacific Islander community, but also standing in solidarity with all of our uh, Black and African American communities as well, given the recent event that just happened this week. So we are so appreciative of your support. And I think the most important thing for us is just having allies um, in terms of the voice and the visibility to raise the awareness around this as well. I thank you very much for your statement and, and for the work that you folks have. So with that, I will uh, quickly uh, read the proclamation. Uh, the proclamation reads as follows. May 18th is the birthday of Vincent Chin, who was brutally murdered in a hate crime in 1982, which fueled a national Asian American activist movement that continues to this day. And whereas everyday youth of all ages and backgrounds suffer from being bullied in schools, online, around the country, which is often compounded in the Asian American and Pacific Islander community because of culture, religions, uh, linguistic barriers that can keep these youth from seeking and receiving help. And whereas the city of Des Moines joins Act to Change in sharing one vision, a world where all youth, including within the Asian and Pacific Islander community have the opportunity to feel proud and supported in the development of their identity and sharing of their stories. And whereas we must continue to empower students by advocating for systemic change and providing resources to promote healthy communities while denouncing all incidents of hate, including and surrounding the COVID-19 crisis against AAPI community, and whereas the city of Des Moines in partnership with the Iowa Asian Alliance and participating community organizations are committed to the important issue and encourage the public to foster dialogue, share resources and learn more about what they can do to fight bullying and hate. Now, therefore, I, the mayor of the city of Des Moines on behalf of our city council and the citizens of Des Moines do hereby proclaim May 18th today, 2020 as AAPI Day Against Bullying and Hate. And uh, we urge all the citizens of Des Moines to uh, reach out and fight bullying and discrimination and hate crimes, uh, which have been on, on the rise, and uh, to uh, stand up against racism and take action to help end bullying and hate in our community. So thank you very much for um, being part of, of our meeting and uh, on this day, um, recognizing the birth birthday of Vincent Chin. Thank you for being here. Yeah. All right, uh, Kay, unless we have anything else, why don't we uh, uh, call our meeting to order? And uh, I would ask you to uh, please take roll. County. Here. Bozen. Here. Voss. Can you? Yes, I can hear you, Connie. Okay. Voss. Thanks. Here. Gray. Here. Westergaard. Here. Mandelbaum. Here. Gatto. Here. Your Honor, we have a quorum. All right. Uh, Thank you all for being here um, and all of our um, citizens who are online here with us. Uh, before we uh, get into our regular agenda, I just want to quickly make a statement. You know, um, 
I want to address the disruption that forced our cancellation of our last Thursday's joint meeting with the Council and the Des Moines Civil and Human Rights Commission. Such racist and sexist, sexist actions can never be tolerated. That's why an investigation is underway by the Des Moines Police Department and our city's IT department. Additionally, our IT professionals are reviewing security protections and video conferencing procedures so that such disruptions can be prevented in the future and that our public meetings like this one tonight can proceed as intended and serve the members of our community. And finally, I've got to tell you, I want to thank Cameron Middlebrooks, Chair of the Civil and Human Rights Commission, and, and I, the both of us, want to assure our residents that we will reschedule our joint meeting uh, sometime soon and, and hopefully uh, yet this summer. And those who disrupted last week's meeting have only succeeded in strengthening our objective. And this will not impede the steps that we've made to slow the work that remains in uh, bridging the gap in our community. And I want to thank our Civil and Human Rights Commission for all their work and all of our citizens and neighborhoods that have participated in uh, helping our community come together to look for a great opportunity and future for all of our citizens. So at any rate, with that, I, I want to thank you for giving me a, a moment just to uh, say that to uh, you as the council and thank you all for your participation the other night and secondly uh, to uh, our citizenry we're going to move forward and uh, uh, nothing's going to stop us now and uh, with that I'd like to have a motion to approve the agenda as presented and or as amended move it's been moved all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. is there any opposition Hearing none, uh, it passes. Item three is approving the consent agenda. Uh, tonight, those are items three through 41. Uh, generally, these are routine items uh, and will be enacted by one roll call vote without separate discussion unless someone, either a council member or someone from the public decides they want to have one pulled for clarification or um, further discussion. Uh, this evening, um, uh, item 4BB, uh, Council Member Gatto wishes to speak. Item 5, uh, I will be voting no. Item 6B, Council Member Gray wishes to speak. Item 7, Council Member Gray wishes to speak. And item 7, Council Member Voss votes no. Item 26, Council Member Westergaard wishes to speak. And item 40 and 40A, uh, Council Member Gatto votes no. Um, are there any other items that anyone would uh, like to, uh, could you put those back up again uh, for a second, Kay? Yes, I can. So we got 4BB, uh, we have 6B, we have seven. There's something. Um, 26. Yep. Uh, 26. And I think that's all for the speakers, right? Right. Mr. Mayor, I'll move item three. Okay, item three. Uh, let's see if there's anyone uh, in the public. It has been moved. But is there any uh, item that anyone from the public uh, would like to speak on? If so, we would ask you to put your hand up now. Again, those are items three through 41. Okay, I don't see anybody. I don't either, Your Honor. All right, would you please poll the council? County. Yes. Bozen. Yes. Boss. Yes. Gray. Yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, no. that's seven yes. Motion carries. Okay, doke. Okay. Thank you. Uh, item four, the license is in, in permits, and um, four BB specifically uh, is for the Southside Food Market at one. At, at 1101 Army Post Road, and it's an e-liquor license. Uh, 
Councilmember Gatto, I believe that's yours. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I guess I, I'd like to know how many calls we've had to this uh, particular uh, establishment, uh, police calls. And uh, I, I believe that this has been a, a problem. That's why I asked on some of my questions if it's under the same ownership. Um, so I, I don't know if anyone can answer that today for me. But that, that one, uh, that particular place um, has had many, I mean, it's had shootings and murders and fights and many, many, uh, many, many uh, calls to it, I believe. And I'm just wondering, do we have a good neighbor agreement in place for that particular establishment? I think that what we ought to do, uh, Joe, is uh, uh, maybe we could uh, continue that particular sure. item. I believe they still can function as a business while we yep. do that research and get that back to us uh, by the next uh, meeting. And then we can have a discussion around that because I would doubt that uh, unless uh, we got it to them a little earlier that they can pull up all the information that we would need to take a look at that. Okay. But I that that sounds great. Yeah, and it's actually in Josh's ward, and I apologize, Josh. I meant to get a hold of you today, but my day has slipped away from me. So yeah, I would continue. Uh, I would continue for BB and take a look at some of those uh, some of those questions that I asked, and maybe see if we can get a good neighbor agreement in place. If if not, um, this is a this is a problem. So I'll I'll move to continue it. All right. Any discussion? Anyone else? We have a motion. Okay. Uh, Kay, would you poll the council, please? Yes. 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 All right. Thanks, Mayor. You bet. That takes us to 6B. Uh, uh, 6 is public improvements, and B is the 6th Avenue streetscape, College Avenue to University Avenue. It's receiving of bids, uh, which will happen on uh, 6 16 of 20. We're going to set a date of hearing of uh, July 13th. The engineer's estimate on this is 3867000 $486.70. Bill Gray, it's yours. For 70 cents, I think I could probably push this one along. Uh, th this is uh, nothing more than uh, highlighting phase two of the total 6th Avenue streetscape. Um, the uh, neighborhood groups, with the help of Brand By, have raised uh, close to $1.4 million of this. So what uh, what they have done is uh, nothing short of a phenomenal. Uh, this is really going to dress the area up, and this is one of the main corridors that does come through to get to downtown Des Moines. So just wanted to highlight that. Uh, we're supposed to be starting that uh, probably later this fall or early winter, and uh, we're going to change the, uh, the whole scenery around there. So I want to move uh, item 6B. All right, item 6B has been moved. Any comment? Anybody else? I've got to tell you, it's been a long time coming, Bill, and it's good to see it uh, heading towards completion. Absolutely. Uh, Kate, pull the council, please. Yes. 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 All right, thank you. Item seven is another public improvement. These are items regarding the proposed Second Avenue reconstruction from University Avenue to the Des Moines River, Council Communication Number 20-220. Uh, it's approving the concept plan and B, approving professional services agreement with Bolton and Mank. Uh, not to exceed 
$485,929. Council Member Gray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this has been one of the, uh, one of my highlighted, uh, right. Hello? One moment, what? Can I hold up or can I go? No, you're good. Keep going. You're good. Go. Okay. All right. Uh, this is one of the projects that uh, I have been working on uh, diligently for about the last three years. We have had constant meetings with uh, the neighborhood group. We've had meetings with the uh, Central Place business owners, the Second Avenue business owners. Uh, and I can't, and we've had plenty of opportunities for give and take. I think that we've come with a great compromise here. Uh, I went through the blue letter and engineering has done a fantastic job of getting all of the uh, phases put in place, what we need to get done, and what everybody should know, this is an all-encompassing project because not only are we going to reconstruct Second Avenue, terrible condition is, is we're going to be doing sewer work and we're going to be doing the bridge work. So we're going to really uh, create a whole new environment for uh, people coming into Des Moines to visit our downtown area, to go to Wells Fargo Arena, have a chance to get to the hospitals, uh, Mercy is ahead, uh, Methodist is down the road, and uh, Luther, Hospital, Luther Hospital is just down the street. Uh, I'm extremely proud of this. I'm extremely happy with all the compromises that we've put together on this. Uh, it's really going to change the uh, the look of uh, downtown for years to come. So I'm very happy uh, to move item seven, seven A, and seven B. Okay. Any other comments? Anybody? Seeing none. Uh, okay. Would you poll the council, please? County. Yes. Bozen. Yes. Voss. No. Gray. Proud, yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, that's six. Yes, motion carries. Okie doke. The next item that uh, was pulled for a uh, little further discussion here uh, and is approving uh, item 26 which is naming of uh, the access road at Riverview Park, uh, the bill in Pam Thompson Parkway. Linda? Thank you, Mayor. I, I also want to, I'm, I should have pulled item 25 also, but I just wanna talk about item 25 and 26, the naming of the Riverview Park um, stage, the, the front row plaza, in honor of um, Polk County, and then the uh, naming of the Bill and Pam Thompson. It will be called uh, Bill and Pam Thompson Parkway, and that's the access road from Corning Avenue to the back of the stage area, and the uh, lawn area in front of the stage is to be named the Polk County Front Row Plaza. and. Uh, it's a real honor that we're, that we're able to do this tonight. Polk County supervisors have been very instrumental in helping uh, getting the Riverview to see its completion. They've uh, donated quite a bit of money. They've worked, they helped us with uh, getting dirt for the site. I mean, all in. And I just really truly thank the Polk County Board of Supervisors. Pam and Bill Thompson have been working on this for probably the last nine years. So before I, before I came around, but everybody knew that they were involved with it from the very beginning and they've been instrumental. They have worked tirelessly and they've worked long hours. I've, they're there on the Friday nights when we've uh, cooked, when they cook hamburgers and hot dogs to raise money, they have have just been great um, for the entire neighborhood. So it's a real honor that we're that we're being able to do this naming tonight. And 
I, I hope everybody will support uh, that motion. So with that, I make the motion to name the access road at Riverview Park, Bill and Pam Thompson Parkway. And my apologies that I didn't pull 25, but it's already passed, so. No, right, thanks, Linda. Any other comments? Uh, Linda, I'll just kind of second everything that you said. Bill and Pam, I've got to tell you, if you ever have a project and they get engaged in it, you're going to get her done. They have done a fabulous job. And and they're engaged in lots of projects. I mean, they're they're involved with the chamber. They're they're just out there supporting everything in our community. Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, with that, and I don't see any other hands up at the moment. Uh, Kay, would you pull the council on that, please? County. Yes. Bozen. Yes. Voss. Yes. Gray. Yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Uh, that completes the consent agenda and moves us uh, to the ordinances. Item 42, first consideration. 42 is amending sections 50 50-26, 50-32.05, 50-34, 50-35 relating to floodplain development regulations. This item was continued from the uh, May 4th, 2020 council meeting. Uh, and I'll open it up and see if there's anybody that uh, would like to say anything. I see one hand up. Uh, Mr. Coonan, it looks like you. Uh, do you have anything to say here? I do, and uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Tim Coonan. I'm with the Davis Brown Law Firm, representing the Central Iowa Water Trails. Uh, a project I know you all are very familiar with as you have been uh, essential and loyal partners to for, for a while now. Um, we would like uh, the opportunity to work further on the language uh, in this uh, proposed ordinance. Um, might have some as drafted. I think we understand the intent, but we want to make sure it doesn't have any unintended consequences. And so I guess uh, today I'm here to ask uh, for a continuance or a continuation here to um, work with legal counsel and staff uh, to uh, draft, uh, continue to draft the ordinance. And, and Tim, you work with water trails, right? I do. I, yeah, I represent the Central Iowa Water Trail. Okay. So the Central Iowa Water Trails would, uh, uh, you're asking for their um, um, ability to, uh, with you, have us uh, give you a little extra time to look at it and sort through the language. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right, Joe. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, I will, I, I think it's important that we have all the stakeholders sitting at the table, making sure that, uh, making sure that they understand the ramifications of what we're doing here and making sure that that's going to be in their budget as we move forward uh, to get this done. Um, so I will move to continue um, item 42. Okay, there's a motion to continue. Are there any other uh, questions? I noticed that, uh, um, Carl, you had your hand up for a minute. Did you get your question answered? Uh, I was going to uh, move continuation, but fast draw Joe got me there first got ahead of me so that's fine gotta okay. be quick carl <laughs> <laughs> all right mayor if i could real quick this got, is, go ahead uh two weeks joe as long as we can have that discussion with the water trails yep that's fine with me just long uh tim and the water trails are included and uh make sure that they know what we're doing why we're doing it and how important it is uh for us and, and our levies uh, of why we're doing these things and what the ramification of their cost is going to be for any additional work that they're gonna have to do that, to budget for. Okay, we can have that conversation. And actually it would be three weeks, June 8th is the next council meeting. So we should have plenty of time to talk with them about that. All right, thanks, Scott. Yeah. 
All right, uh, seeing no one else. Uh, okay, would you poll the council, please? County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Voss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Um, it looks like it's 501. Uh, I think we need to move straight to hearing items now. Uh, our first hearing item is item 45. It's on the conveyance of a vacated alley right away, uh, west of and adjoining 1624 Ohio Street to Mark C. Daggy and Leon F. Daggy for $337. Uh, this is a hearing, so we'll go ahead and uh, open the hearing and ask, is there anyone on council that has any questions on this item? Seeing none, is there anyone in the uh, public or audience who would like to speak on this item? Okay, I don't see any. Hearing none, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to move 45, and I just got a little sideline here. Uh, Mark and Leanne, uh, 25 years ago, <laughs> uh, their son, Mac John Daggy, wrestled with my son, Kelly. Uh, so we go back a long, long time. So uh, glad to see they own Night Owl Pring off of uh, 6th Avenue, right about where phase two is going to start of the 6th Avenue corridor. Uh, so uh, I'm glad to see they're staying right in the uh, neighborhood and continuing to grow their business. So. I'm going to move by item 45. All right, item 45 has been moved. If there are no questions, uh, Kay, would you pull the council, please? County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Boss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Let's move to item 46. Item 46 on the request from Savannah Holmes, Inc. Ted Grope is the officer to rezone 3323, 3335, and 3341 East 24th Street from P2 Public Civic and Institutional to N3A Neighborhood to allow for the development of one house type B, single household residential dwelling. A is the first consideration of the ordinance above. B is the final consideration of the ordinance above and the waiver is requested by Ted Grope, the president of Savannah Homes, Inc. It requires six votes. Uh, again, this is a hearing item. Let's go ahead and open the hearing and uh, see first if there's anyone in the council that uh, has any comments or questions and then we'll turn to the uh, uh, public. Seeing no one on the council, uh, let's open it up. Kay, do you see any hands up from the public on this one? I do not, but I want to remind people that if they want to raise their hand, it's on the right-hand side after you hit participants. If you're on a phone, you have to hit star nine, just to remind you on how to raise your hand. All right, thanks, Kay. Thanks, Kay. With that said, um, I would uh, move item 46, 46A, and 46B. All right, the item's been moved. Unless anyone has any point that we'd like to have clarified, I would ask Kay to please pull the council. County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Voss? Yes. All right. Gray. You can hear my dog, Mark. Yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right, takes us to item 47, which is on a request from Skyline Trucking, Inc. Ronald Fadness is the officer to rezone property at 3220 Dixon Street from I-1, I believe, industrial to I-2 industrial 
uh, to allow for future consideration by the planning and zoning of adjustment of a conditional use for a fabrication and production intensive use specifically for a 12,000 gallon above ground petroleum tank for truck fueling to replace uh, the use of mobile tanks. A is the first consideration of the ordinance above and B is the final consideration of the ordinance above. The waiver is requested by Greg Bruning, the president of Skyline Trucking Inc. and requires six votes. Uh, go ahead and uh, let's open up this hearing and ask the uh, Council, if they have any uh, questions or comments they would like to make on this um, or any concerns. Anybody? Seeing none, uh, let's go ahead and uh, open it up and see if there's anybody in the general public that has any questions or uh, clarifications they'd like to have made on this, this move at 3220 Dixon. Okay, seeing none. Oh. Yeah. I none. think we need a motion. I, uh, I will make a, a motion to move item 47, 47A and B. All right, the motion. Uh, seeing no hands up at the moment, I would ask uh, Kate, would you pull the council, please? County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Voss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right, move to item 48 on request from Scottish Rite Park, Inc. Daniel J. Boer as the officer to amend the plan DSM creating our tomorrow comprehensive plan future land use designation and rezone 2909 Woodland Avenue from NX3 neighborhood mix to RX1 mixed use to allow the applicant to request a conditional use permit for a business selling liquor, wine, and or beer as a restaurant bistro within the existing assisted living residence facility. A is the first consideration of the ordinance above and B is the final consideration of the ordinance above. The waiver is requested by Daniel J. Boer, president and CEO of Scottish Rite Park uh, and requires six votes. Uh, let's see if the council has any questions on this one. Uh, we'll open the hearing. Anybody, any thoughts? Uh, seeing, seeing none, Mr. Yeah, go ahead. Seeing none, Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to move item 48, 48A and 48B. All right. The item has been moved. Uh, do we see anybody in the general public who has a comment? I see none. Would you go ahead and poll the council, please? County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Boss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Okay. Item 49 is on a request from Pinnacle on Floor LLC. Randy Walters as uh, the official regarding approval of the First Amendment to the Village at Grays Lake BUD conceptual plan for 2710 and 2500 Fleur Drive to define lot five of the plan to be developed with a 20 unit multi-household row home. Uh, let's go ahead and open the hearing and see if the council has any comments on this one. Again, 2710 and 2500 Fleur Drive. Seeing none, Mr. Mayor, I'll move item 49. All right, item 49 has been moved. Is there anybody, do we see anybody in the public? I don't. Okay, let's go ahead and poll the council. County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Boss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Got him. 
Dado. Joe, are you there? He muted himself. Joe, do you have yourself muted? There you go. Joe? I, I did have to mute myself, but yes, the, I would vote yes. Okay, seven okay. yes, Your Honor. Motion carries. All right, takes us to item 50. It's on a request from Walden Point LP. Robert Burns is the partner for a second amendment to the Walden Point PUD conceptual plan at 1204 Street to allow the use of the three story, 60 bed group living assisted living facility to be converted to units allowing either group living, assisted living facility, or multiple household living for seniors. Uh, let's go ahead and open the hearing on this. Item 50, 1204th Street, which would be right on University there. All right, anybody? Seeing none um, from the council, would anybody like to make a motion on this? One? I can do that, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move item 50. All right, item 50 has been moved. Uh, anybody in the uh, public trying or wanting to make a comment? Okay, I don't see anyone. No, there is not. Let's go ahead and poll the council, please. County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Boss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Item 51 is continuing a hearing on a request from Anchor Investment Group, LLC. Michael Donlin is the officer to rezone 901 Southeast 7th Street and 709 and 714 Vail Street from N3C neighborhood to NX2 neighborhood mix to allow for the development of two, two for row house structures, each containing six household units to June 8th of 2020. Again here, everyone, this is a motion to continue the hearing uh, unless anybody wants to say anything about it this evening, and that would be till June 8th. Anybody? Mr. Mayor, is there anybody on that wants to speak of this? I, I've had some neighbors call me about this. I know that, uh, I guess I was, a, I was under a different, I didn't know they were going to have six households in two row houses like three different three different households are going to be in one row house is that how i'm reading this is that the density that we're looking for scott uh could you answer that and i Michael since we're Ludwig's continuing here the too. hearing mike's yeah. on yeah mike go ahead mike mike, Did mike I... ludwig a second he might have got that was my understanding mayor but let, let's see if we can't still get I mean, that's what it says that that's the problem that the neighbors are having some issues with they're all single family homes down there and uh the people directly adjacent to it are very concerned that we're putting that type of density in there so i i think that they need to be part of the conversation and i need to be brought up to speed on on this particular project i know carl and i have had some discussion and some emails back and forth but i guess i never realized i thought it was just row homes that we were putting there but not where they were going to have three different households in each one and i think that's where the neighbors are having a little heartburn so i'll move to continue item 51 we don't need to have a lot of discussion about it right now I just need a little bit more information. So I'll move item 51 to continue as it is. Okay, we'll get that to you. Okay, is there anyone in the public that would like to make comment on this? Seeing none, let's go ahead and poll the council, okay? Okay, county? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Boss? Yes. Gray? 
Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. It's moved to item 52 on the approval of an amendment to the operational agreement with Child Time Child Care, Inc., for the operation and maintenance of the child care facility located in the park and ride facility at 610 Center Street, Council Communication Number 20-214. Uh, let's open the hearing and see if Council has any comments on this one. Seeing none, none, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, I'm happy to, to move item 51, assuming there's no one in the public who wants to, or not 51, 52, uh, assuming there's no one in the public who wants to speak on this. Okay, no. uh, okay I'm not seeing anybody at the moment. Have you seen anybody? No, item I, have, 52. I have not. And when they raise their hands, they should raise to the top. But I will remind everybody, if you want to speak, you need to raise your hand. And on a computer, it's on the right-hand side. And then on your phone, it's star nine. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's go ahead and poll the council. Item 52. County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Boss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Great. Let's move to item 53. It's on a proposed amendments to the approved zoning ordinance in chapter 134 of the city code relating to lodging, short-term commercial rental uses. This item was continued from February 24th, 2020 council meeting. Uh, a is a first consideration, the ordinance above and B is a final consideration the ordinance above. The waiver is requested by Chris Johansson, Community Development Director, but it requires six votes. And uh, let's see, um, any comments from our um, uh, council members as we open the hearing? Josh? Yeah. Um, uh, and I know we've, we've had a, a lot of discussion on, on this. Um, in, in looking at it, there, there are several items that I'll, I'm gonna wanna have continued discussion on uh, or that I have concern with and maybe a potential solution. Uh, one of which is we talked about the, this idea of uh, amnesty for existing uh, short-term rentals that, that have not been following, uh, not been following the, the law to date. Uh, and that's where this idea of, or I think the, the language in paragraphs 10 and 11, allowing for anything, uh, any uh, application prior to uh, August 30th, 2020, to not have to follow the density requirement. Uh, which is the 700 feet. Uh, and uh, I've got concern that the way that is drafted is too broad and would like to see us uh, get the balance right that, that still provides some protection for the neighborhood if we wanna go down the, the amnesty path. Uh, and so I'd like to see us uh, add language. Well, one, remove the language about uh, August 30th 2020, uh, after August 30th, 2020, in paragraph 10 and 11, and instead look at language that would uh, allow the Board of Adjustment uh, and say they may provide a variance from the requirement of separation by at least 700 feet if an applicant meets the, the following requirements. One, files an application prior to August 30th, 2020, which is similar to what what is there before. Two, uh, demonstrates the property had previously been used as a short-term rental uh, by providing proof of payment of taxes consistent with the, the requirements in paragraph seven of this section. Uh, and three, has the approval of 50% of the property owners within the 700 linear feet. Uh, 
And if if that language doesn't work, then I I'm not in a position to support the uh, the provision, and I just want to see the um, see after August 30th, 2020 removed. So so that's that's the first issue that that I've identified uh, based on the drafting. The second piece uh, is we have uh, a couple places where um, owner occupant is uh, is referenced, but I think we've uh, at least in the current version taken that definition out of the uh, out of the red line version. So the definition of owner occupant is struck, and I think we need that definition. Uh, I'd actually just go back to the the definition that that's already in there, but I'd I'd also be willing to change owner occupant from 245 days to 185 days uh, because I think uh, uh, as long as someone is is meeting the residency requirements and is there for uh, at least six months. Uh, in a day, uh, that to me is, is is sufficient for an owner occupant. And then the the third issue that that I've identified was something that I think the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended, and that we've heard from neighbors, uh, and that's to to change the time period of Zoning Board of Adjustment review from ten years to five years. Uh, and I think all those things. Uh, are things that we've discussed and and uh, that I would ultimately like to uh, to see in in a version, but I wanted to put that out there at the beginning of this process uh, so that folks uh, could provide provide input along those lines. Uh, but uh, I, I wanted to say that I, I intend to make a motion along those lines uh, if I get uh, depending on the input from folks. Uh, Jeff, I'd like to ask you uh, quickly to uh, make a comment uh, based upon what has been published and if we make a uh, real significant amendment, do we have to start over and republish uh, after we review and make revisions to all this? Um, Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes, you're absolutely right. If if, if the changes are substantial um, or significant, then then we would have to start over. Um, I, I would want to see um, the language, uh, the the, um, uh, the 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 council member is proposing. Uh, you know, we use the term owner occupied, um, but don't have the definition in there um, anymore. Uh, I don't think that's, I don't think that's a change that would require starting over. Um, and I'm not sure that um, the changes that are proposed uh, regarding the 700, the, the uh, amnesty uh, distance um, for those that are already uh, operating would require it either, but I, I definitely would want to look at that. So my suggestion would be if if the amendment is acceptable to council, um, that just the the first consideration um, would be approved, and then um, <laughs> and then we'll we'll look at it in much more detail and and make sure we don't think that that we have to start over. Okay. Okay. Um, I see a uh, one uh, member of the public, but two uh, three council members that that uh, have their hands up. Uh, if council is okay, uh, why don't we let uh, uh, Brad Padre uh, speak real quickly, and then we'll move to Council Member Gatto. One moment, Brad. One moment, I gotta make sure he's unmuted. He is now. Brad, you're okay to speak. Hi, uh, can you hear me? All right. Thank you, City Council, for taking a second to hear me out. Um, Simply just right off the bat, uh, you know, we've been all debating this uh, for a very, very long time. Uh, I'm here to say that several people have already dropped out of Airbnb due to coronavirus. 
Um, if there's concern that we're going to continue to, you know, buy up properties over the course of the next year, that's definitely not going to happen. If Mr. Mandelbaum is looking to find ways to limit the growth of Airbnb, uh, now is absolutely the best time to do it. Uh, the property on Harwood, that's been the source of a lot of consternation, is up for sale. They are trying to get rid of it. So bear in mind that when Mr. Mandelbaum says he hears from neighbors, he's really speaking about a literal pocket of the neighborhood. I don't think any of the other council members are situation in the same way. Um, so I would really encourage us to, you know, the longer we kind of hold out about this, the longer that, you know, us investors and Airbnb owners kind of struggle with recovering from coronavirus. So a lot of people have already dropped out. Um, a couple of people are still hanging on, myself and a few dozen others, but it's going to come a real bad time where if we don't get, you know, good answers from city council, uh, we are going to lose faith. You know, me personally, I'm already looking at other cities and kind of backing out, which might make some people happy. Um, but I will be taking my money outside of the city, uh, which is not good considering how badly, you know, everyone needs investment now. So uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, I think finding a, a quick solution is a great way to do this. And um, again, the house on Harwood's up for sale. Those those folks want out. And so do, you know, a bunch of other people and a bunch of other people already bailed. So Thanks for listening to me, and that's all I have to say. Thanks, Brad. Joe? Mayor, there's some other uh, people that want to speak, so I, it, we'll, we'll let the public speak, and then I'll, I, I can speak after that if that's all right with you. Yep. I, I'm going to quickly ask Council Member Westergaard if she has a comment, and then we'll go on to, to David. I, uh, I do I do have a comment, Mayor. And, and what ahead. I would like to say is, you know, we've been working on this for literally – more than a year and we've had workshops we've made changes you know we we get to the council table and we think we've got it right and then we want to do more changes i'm not going to support any additional changes to this ordinance i'll vote for it tonight as is but i'm not going to vote to make changes i remember very specifically uh, City Manager Sanders said this is a works in project in in process. If we want to make changes, we can always bring something back. But these people that that are trying to do short term rentals that are trying to be good neighbors in our neighborhood, and I'm not aware of any short term rental person that's not a good neighbor in in my neighborhoods anyway. And I don't hear from residents with complaints. I've heard absolutely nothing. So I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna support any motion to make any changes. Let's get this passed tonight as is. And if we want to make changes, then we can bring it back and discuss it. But it's not fair to the public to keep keep bringing this on. You look at it online and then and then we get to vote and then we want to make changes again. That's simply not fair to our citizens. That's all I have to say. All right. Thanks, Linda. Uh, it looks like uh, our the next hand that was up was David uh, Schlarman, and uh, then uh, we'll go to Council Member uh, Voss, and then to uh, Diane Graham. David, hi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I just want to raise one point, um, and I've sent uh, a message to Josh, and I know Carl Voss was part of the conversation as well. And I brought this up at the recent planning and zoning uh, meeting. Uh, and, and it really has to do with um, the fact that we in Sherman Hill, at least, have always said that if you're an owner occupied short term commercial rental, we don't care how many there are in our neighborhood. We support that. And as the, the ordinance is currently drafted, um, we're sort of lumping owner occupied short-term rentals along with everything else and we're putting a 700 foot restriction on those as well so so one potential modification that i would uh, request of this to uh, remove that 700 foot uh, um, restriction from owner occupied airbnbs we don't care how many of them we have in our neighborhood 
Uh, I haven't heard any complaints from anyone about owner occupied Airbnbs. Most of our issues have been around the ones that are non owner occupied, and, and we do support the 700 foot uh, uh, restriction there. So, so uh, I think we've kind of overshot the target a bit. Um, and uh, that would be the only uh, additional request that I that we would have from from Sherman Hill. Um, thank you. Good. Right, thanks, David. Carl. Sure. Uh, let's see. Mayor County and uh, Jeff, are there uh, just to review that I think um, Josh had three changes and uh, or suggestions. Uh, uh, which of those would be um, insignificant enough that we could uh, carry through with this evening e evening's vote? And and if the other council members would um, um, adopt those, and I think one might be to define what owner occupied by the number of days. Um, is that insignificant? enough that we could still vote on this uh, uh, item this evening. So that's a question for Jeff. Well, this is Sue Ann, Count Mayor and Council, if I could quickly interject. Sue Ann, jump right in. There is current definition in the code as it was passed on 1216 of 19 that says that the occupancy is 120 days a year if the owner is not present. So we do have a definition for owner occupied based on number of days already in the ordinance. So maybe that would help Jeff um, think about the question from the legal perspective. So that's... That, Sue Ann, could you provide where, where in the code that is? So I can make sure that's what we passed. Where it's it was in the code that was passed twelve sixteen of nineteen. So that is the current code on the books. Yeah, but this version strikes that out, right? Yes. So my question to Jeff is, if we leave it in and we don't strike it out, is that a minor amendment or a major amendment that would have to go and, back to and, the PNC? And, and Sue Ann, I think you're referring to paragraph 15, and that, that's actually referring to the number of days they could rent it. Uh, I think the language in paragraph 10 and 11, it's just a sentence that struck out that is talking about the 245 days right. annually. But you could, but you could say that as long as they live there, the 245 days, that's what's considered owner occupied, which I believe is what you're trying to get at is some definition. Correct. Yeah, the, the owner occupied is not a concern because, um, in terms of the uh, major or minor significance uh, and the impact, because we already use the term and it stays in there in paragraph ten. Um, as uh, owner, uh, a short term rental shall be owner occupied if, if in that district. Um, so I'm not concerned if council wants a more specific definition. I don't think that's a major change. That's just a more specifically defining a term that's already in the ordinance. So that that particular one, I'm not concerned with. What I'm concerned, what I'm concerned with, and what I'm going to want time to look at is what the. So Carol, to answer your question. Um, uh, Josh was talking about he had uh, language he wanted to suggest. I don't think conceptually um, that I'm I'm uh, terribly uh, worried about anything getting to that point of being a significant a significant change yet. But um, depending on what the language is, because I uh, I understood Josh to say that he wanted to um, remove language in paragraph ten and eleven. So. I've got to be able to see that language to, to be able to say that yes, it's okay or no, it's not. Um, well, uh, um, Jeff, while that's being discussed, is it is it insignificant if if the period of the uh, um, permit was reduced from ten years to five years? That's a lot tougher question. Um, 
on on the one hand, you uh, you have a situation where um, it's it's cutting cutting the permit time uh, uh, in half, so that that might seem to be uh, rather significant. On the other hand, uh, it's actually reducing a specific term, numerical term, um, while it's reducing it by uh, by half. Uh, you know, I, I think that you could get some argument that that is uh, significant, especially from the short-term rental owners. Um, the the difference, however, um, is that it, it's generally if it's the same topic or subject matter and it's a gradient change, in my mind, it would be a lot easier to defend just to, for example, not that I'm concerned that we can't defend it, but it would be easier to defend going from 10 years to seven years than 10 years to five years because there, there becomes a, an, an argument as to, to that basis that uh, uh, when you're cutting it in half, that that's significant. On the other hand, you're still giving people five years of, uh, of time to have the, the permit. Um, well, I guess it would depend on whether or not, you know, assuming that they can reapply for an additional five years. Um, I, 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 if, if they have that, you know, that, that they can get the additional five years from the, the Board of Adjustment, I have less concern about that. So, so Jeff, you're saying uh, we can do a five year and then they can go back and ask for another five year. You're not as concerned with that? Correct. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, if it was, you get it for 10 years, uh, but in, instead council wants to do five years right off the, the bat and then, and then uh, uh, with the understanding that assuming everything goes okay, they can get another five year term. Yeah, that's, you know, then then you're really just uh, I, I would argue uh, on council's behalf that it becomes a question of gradient. And and so that that makes makes me have less concern. If, on the other hand, it was you only get five years. Then that's more of a problem. It, they have to republish. But. Yeah, oh. the, the, the intent was the the former the first piece you mentioned five years and then you could get another five years. And yeah, I'm so sorry I, if I wasn't clear about that. Yeah, and, I think that makes it a little, little easier. And this is Westergaard. I would like, are you calling on me, Kay? I'm sorry. No, this is Sue Ann. And, and when you're done, council member, I, I had a comment on that. You know, it's a conditional use permit. This is Westergaard speaking. It, give them the 10 years because for somebody who's who has to worry about financing and insurance and you know, to just say five years, I'm not sure that that many banks or, or lenders are going to be happy with that for somebody who's getting a loan for an investment property. So I'm, I'm going to advocate that we leave it 10 years. If it's a problem after one year, we can pull the permit. If it's a problem after two years, so I don't I don't see what what the difference between I don't know why the urgency to change it to five years, keep it at 10. So it makes it easier to do business in our city. And if there's a problem, it comes back anyway. That's okay, the end of but let's day. let's go back to uh, the protocol. Um, did uh, that question get answered? And if so let's move on to uh, Diane Graham who's had her uh, hand up for a while. <clears throat> Diane? Oh, I just was waiting to be unmuted. Thank you. Uh, Diane Graham, 635 46th Street. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council Members for the chance to speak. Uh, just a reminder, I have three properties in our Ingersoll Park neighborhood that have been advertising on Airbnb and there's one next door to me. Um, I am really asking you to support both the Plan and Zoning Commission's recommended five-year conditional use permit and for the immediate enforcement of the 700-foot separation, the so-called density provision. The five-year permit, which would still be the most generous I've seen in any city in the country, and the 700-foot separation rule are both crucial protections for our neighborhoods dealing with these businesses. You go back to the last major changes that were presented in late December, 
And I argued then that condos and apartment buildings had yeah. density caps, but fa single family neighborhoods didn't. This 700 foot separation, which came out of your April work session, sounded like the answer to that. So please don't turn around now and put it on a shelf for the summer just when people start applying. Uh, I'm talking about what you've been calling the amnesty. Nobody's been able to tell me how many locations might actually have problems with the 700 foot separation. But for the few that I've heard of, I would argue the Board of Adjustment could just grant a variance for those, especially if neighborhoods like them uh, and don't mind having them close together. I also could definitely support Council Member Mandelbaum's three pronged proposal tonight with the 700 foot, foot provision and limiting it to the existing rentals, but require the 50% uh, approval of the property owners. That would be fine too. Um, I do want to stress that um, a city staffer recently told the Plan and Zoning Commission that neighbors like me seem to think without the 700 foot rule, short term rental owners are going to get a free pass. Not at all. What I do think is that we were counting on you to add density protections for our single family neighborhoods, just as a majority of you pledged you would do back at February's public hearing. And with the exception of the very welcome improvement in parking rules that were suggested at the work session by Councilman Gray, this separation requirement is the only new protection from my neighborhood that came out of the work session. Now, I wanna say that an overused comeback to objections like ours has been that this is a living document that can always be amended. But you know, those amendments aren't gonna to apply to any existing short-term rentals. They'd all be <laughs> grandfathered in. Another overused comeback is if there's a problem with a short-term rental, the Board of Adjustment can just pull the permit. But how big a problem would it have to be before that really happens? In the meantime, neighbors get to become the snitches reporting every violation over and over in hopes of building a case that might result in pulling the permit. So I just want to end with a quote that Councilman Mandelbaum used in February that was, if you want neighborhoods to be more welcoming to Airbnbs, you need to give us something to protect the neighborhoods we love. Yes, help us protect the neighborhoods we love. This ordinance states in its first paragraph that it's supposed to address the needs of the neighborhoods. So let's put some muscle behind that. Please support the five-year conditional use permit, the additional parking, and yes, the immediate enforcement of the 700-foot rule. Please keep your pledge to the neighborhood. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Yes. This is to Ann Donovan. If I could make a statement. Okay. Or later. Sue Ann, I think you ought to make a statement right now. As far as the, the variance that she refers to, variances are difficult for the board to give. It has to prove that there's no other economic value for that for that structure. That would be impossible to prove just to give them a variance. So. It's inaccurate to say the board could just give them a variance if some people like it. Okay. Mr. Mayor, can yeah. I have my turn now? I, I think everyone spoke that uh, I was gonna listen to speak. So um, I, I appreciate everyone's comments. We've, we've been down this road for over a year and a half now. And we had, after February 20th, we had a workshop. We talked about what we wanted to do. Um, there's one legitimate change in there that's probably not gonna muddy the waters too much is the five year with the additional five year. I would agree to that. I think that's a, I think that's a legitimate uh, um, thing to ask for. And so I will make a motion with that in there to move 53 and 53A and having the additional, changing it from mm -hmm. five years to, uh, to have five years and then an additional five years, you have to go back to the Board of Adjustment. That's my right, motion. We have a motion. Uh, Mr. Gray, it looks like your hand is up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And then this doesn't have to be part of uh, Joe's motion, but uh, one thing, I've, and I asked Sue Ann this, uh, and I put a question uh, to the council in the questions this afternoon. Uh, one thing I would, hate to see happen is if we let the, the short-term rentals come in and then we incentivize them either through the neighborhood finance corporation 
or invest DSM where we're using taxpayer dollars to help a person build their home so they can run a business. I just wanted to get somewhere in there that where somebody can take a look at it and say, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Let's not do this. Uh, you know, that's putting taxpayer money to use in the wrong way. And I hate to look at a, at a fellow resident and tell them, yes, we uh, we voted this through. And guess what? You're going to help fund it with your tax dollars. So uh, I just want to put that out there so that we think about that. It doesn't have to be part of or anything, but before this thing gets uh, finally put to use, let's use some common sense in ju judging how we're going to get this done. Okay. Can, can Mr. Guard say something? Yeah, we've got a couple other citizens that okay. had their hands up, but go ahead, Linda. Well, and I, I, I saw that question on the, uh, on the city council vote sheet. NFC could not, would never loan money for a rental. When you go to NFC or some of these places, even if you got an FHA loan, you cannot rent your property for any days. Zero. It is in the it is in the mortgage that you cannot rent it. But invest DSM, Linda. We can do for rentals. Yeah, but I think I think with Carl and Connie and 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 the mayor on that committee, uh, I think that those rules can be adjusted in invest DSM and give direction to uh, Amber that 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 won't happen. I would agree with you 100 percent, Bill. Yeah, I mean, We're not going to give invest there we DSM. Go. That, that's all I would yeah. say. No, I, I would agree with that. I didn't know that Invest DSM was doing that. I know NFC, FHA, none of the government programs will cover any kind of a, you can't rental, you can't rent a single family home. Thank you, Lenny. Okay. I, I need that clarification. All right, let's, uh, uh, Carly Hamilton, your hands up. Carly, Thank I you. think you're un yeah. you're ready to go. Yeah, um, Carly Hamilton, six seven eight Forty Fifth Street. I want to thank you, Council Members and Mayor Mayor, for taking the time to thoughtfully look at the balance of regulations, those that favor short term rentals and those that protect the impact of these mini hotels on residential neighborhoods. Three items will do the most to help those of us who live next to and near Airbnbs for three hundred and sixty five days a year. And just because a house is for sale does not mean it will not become a short term rental, because that is exactly how 4420 Harwood Drive became a short term rental. It was for sale first. One, let every neighborhood, not just Sherman Hill, be able to decide if it wants only owner occupied short term rentals in their midst. Many people from Ingersoll Park spoke at zoning enforcement sponsored meetings at planning and zoning commission meetings and city council meetings. Ingersoll Park has also emailed the mayor and select council members, and we did not and still don't have a working neighborhood association. But many of us voiced our objections to the non-owner occupied short-term rentals. It wasn't just Sherman Hills, and we would like that same consideration five years and no more on the length of a conditional use permit is very important 10 years is not needed by financial institutions if you want to have a short-term rental bed and breakfast owners don't get that from the city i spoke to many many financial institutions they do not require it to even look at it so please five years and no more so that neighborhoods can consider how this commercial business is working in their neighborhood. Please no amnesty for the 700 foot density. This is one of the few things the city council has given neighbors. And by negating the 700 foot density for three months to anyone who wants to apply to be a short term rental is really a slap in the face. I support with what, what Josh Mandelbaum has proposed this evening. So I'm asking you to consider those three items and I thank you very much. All right, thanks, Carly. Um, Josh, I see your um, hand is up and then uh, Carl, and then uh, looks like Brad's hand is up again. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna, since there's now a, a motion on the table, 
Uh, I, I'm going to ask my fellow council members to vote no so that we can address the policy uh, in the right way. And I, I'm not willing to, to vote for this. Uh, one of the things that we had not seen prior to this meeting uh, was the, the amnesty language that we talked about in a work session. And the way that language was drafted, in my opinion, was overly broad and not something that I could support. And we were waiting to see that language. Uh, I tried to come up with a, uh, a solution that I think is consistent with the concept, so not, not a change. Um, but I'm also willing to wait till the, the second or third reading of this to if we need to get this right. Uh, I would like to see uh, I would like to see those those three pieces. Um, I'm also willing, as, as Dave Schlarman mentioned, uh, I, I would be willing to look at language to create uh, some sort of option for uh, an exception from the 700 foot rule for owner occupied. Uh, but again, I would want to see the neighborhood protection or checks written into that. Uh, but just trying to, to ram this through, uh, I'm not. Josh, I'm not nobody's ramming anything that. through. No one's ramming anything through. We okay, stop it. it. Stop it. I, I will stop it. But don't say okay. that. Uh, well, the, 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 what, it, maybe that was a, a little inartful, but to say to just get this done tonight, because we've spent so much time on this, the whole point is to get the language right. And, and when, you, when you try and stifle the discussion on that, it makes it harder to get it right and build consensus. And I'm not comfortable voting with this. So I'm going to vote no on this motion. And I encourage uh, others to do so as well so that we can get the language right uh, because we didn't have that language in front of us as a work session. Okay. Uh, Carl? I don't know if anybody can hear me. That's Connie. Yeah, go Connie. I have been trying to speak for quite a while, but I'm at a disadvantage because my internet is down, so I'm on the phone. Um, I am, I also am not good with this motion because of the amnesty part to protect the neighbors. I think that was the one thing we, I was looking for. So I don't like the dates in having the date and giving the amnesty. Uh, so for that part of it, if we can't change that minimum part of it, then I can't support it. Um, I think some of the things I, I appreciate that we've been working on this, but once you pass something, it's much more difficult to modify it. And we have a chance to get it right. And quite honestly, everybody's still operating um, without, you know, these regulations really on them too much. So uh, as far as those are the one criteria that I'm pretty strong on that I can't support it if it's not gonna change. Uh, Connie, would you clarify exactly which ones it is that you're this, number 10 and a lot where we have the date where this amnesty basically that anybody you know just because you've had it that's the main one for me that you have until august 30th is what you're saying right the august, august 30th the date the date i believe everybody's had plenty of time to operate and had opportunity that everybody needs to go through the correct the process is laid out they go through the board of adjustments and just because you've been one doesn't mean you have a leg up on somebody else or whatever. Does that make sense? Okay. I think I get that one. So, uh, let's have. Uh, Your Honor. Yeah, go ahead. Who's Your this? Honor. If I could this ask. This is Sue Ann Donovan again. Go ahead, Sue Ann. Mayor Council, I, I understand the concerns about the amnesty. But I also understand the concerns from staff and probably the short term rental is how, how do we manage who who gets the 700 foot benefit and who doesn't if they're across the street from each other. Is it just going to be a race to whoever gets into the door fastest that they get the they get first and then the second one doesn't because they're not going to meet the variance test. There's going to be. Well, they 
they can't meet the variance test for the Board of Adjustment. So you just have to consider how you really want to handle that and how you want staff to handle that. I, well, I would say I'm comfortable with the race because there's nothing that stops anyone from applying to date. You could have your, if you wanted to apply, you could, you could get your application in. Yeah, and there are some that have taken advantage of that and are sitting and waiting. So they they will get the benefit if you don't do the the allowance that others who came in holding back to wait for the ordinance to be totally done. They've held back and now you're putting them at a disadvantage. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Swin. That that seems like a problem to me. Well, don't you still have to have uh, the, you know the it, it, Go ahead, Carl. Well, what if we just drop, we just knock the amnesty language out of this? I think that would clean it up and um, let the chips fall where they may. And you know, let's let's uh, we've already agreed to to five years with 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 a renewal. Uh, Jeff said that would be okay. That's a minor change. The other change is. Uh, to define how many days is a um, owner occupied. If we knock the um, um, uh, amnesty out of his, let's just do that and get it done. I, I don't understand what that means, Carl. Well, uh, let's see if I get the, um, shoot, I gotta get um, the length just I, uh, I think at one time Josh was considering a proposal just I, deleting I, the, I think the language the, that that Carl is talking about is removing the three words after August 30th 2020 that are in paragraph 10 and paragraph 11. I think that's what Carl is talking about. That's what I was talking about. Just go that route and and uh, so 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 explain to me if there's two of them, which I don't know if there's two of them within 700 feet right now, and they go apply. Both of them go apply. Only one of them's going to get it, and the other one's not going to get a variance. So tell me how that works. Well, uh, Joe, they're operating illegally now. I mean, we 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 we're not. <laughs> coming to agreements so we got to do something so yeah, well, if then let's just, we'll just vote on this if, and, and i've got the motion out there let's just vote and then you guys can make your motion and it we're never the seven of us is never going to agree with with this ever we've we've wasted nine months and staff's time it's just never going to happen so sometimes it's well, going to be a four three vote or a three four vote it's okay I mean, it's nothing personal, but to, to say that I'm trying to stifle discussion and inartful is is rudely mistaken. And I do take offense to it. Okay. And now, Joe, just for a clarification, you moved 53 and 53A, 53A but not B, correct? That is correct. Okay, uh, we still have other hands up. Uh, Brad, you had something else you want to say here? Yeah, I would like to say, uh, hi, thank you very much, Mayor. Real quick, I'm totally, I think me and the other short-term rental owners are totally fine bringing it down to five years. Totally reasonable. Um, I think we want to get this done as, you know, and get ourselves set up as quickly as possible. I think the amnesty is important. Um, I think that, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I do believe that, you know, the, the stifling discussion happens Whenever we come to the table, you know, I've been to every meeting, every workshop, I've heard this discussion go everywhere. And I represent far more people than the people who are detracting from this. And I do have their signatures. And I think they'd also be very disappointed. Let's just recall that meeting that I brought. I brought 45 people in there. They couldn't even all speak. You know, these people from all around the city and their lives are going to be affected by this if we have to shut things down. I think a good compromise is making the amnesty much shorter making the amnesty much, much shorter. If we vote on it tonight, we make the amnesty June June 15th, because that means that the people who are on the ball get in, and that means that the people who are off the ball, yep, they're gonna get screwed, but that is what some of these people want. Some people in city council and some people who are citizens, they want to see this platform ruined. 
And so that's going to ruin some of them. So my proposal, I don't know if you like it, but we do five years, totally fine. And then you simply reduce the amnesty to a much shorter period so that people can't sneak through. So that the people who are the good neighbors, the ones in communication with me and the other leaders, they know what's up. The people who are operating off the radar, they will get screwed. Okay, that's all I have to say. Have a great day. Uh, it looks like Linda and um, Josh still have their hands up. So, Linda, do you have a comment here? I, I just, I appreciate what Sue Ann Donovan said. And I really urge us to follow what Sue Ann has said. Sue Ann has worked very hard on this. We've got an amnesty date in there. Let's leave it alone. I just encourage, I encourage my council members to support this. We'll do the one change that, that has been made in the motion, but let's just leave the amnesty alone. It's, it's, we have to make it fair for all of our residents. And this is the best way to make that happen. Okay. Uh Josh, your hand is still up, and then Joe, uh, you've got a motion, and I will have to figure out whether or not you're going to leave it as is or change it at all. Yeah, I'll make a comment yeah. after Josh is finished. Okay. So, so, so first, a point of clarification, Joe. When I used the term "inartful," I was ref referencing my choice of words previously, not in, in, in saying "stifle," because I didn't mean that you were trying to stifle or ram, ram through. My choice of words was inartful. What I'm trying to say and what the proposal was designed to do was to address the concerns that Sue Ann raised about the zoning or about the amnesty without completely eliminating it. And, and that is, if you get your application in, uh, you demonstrate that you had actually been a short-term rental by by showing that you had paid taxes using the language that is in paragraph seven. I just wanted to reference because we require that demonstration under under our our code already. We're we're gonna require that demonstration. I was just gonna require that as a condition of being granted the amnesty. And then there is approval of the property owners nearby. So that's how you choose. You don't it avoids if if folks are supportive of having multiple short-term rentals, it avoids this problem altogether of having to choose who goes first. Uh, and it provides the neighborhood that protection in the amnesty process. So I was trying to craft something that 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 was something that everyone could live with. But if we're going to have to vote on this resolution, I'm happy to vote it down and try and try and get that uh, get that compromise in the future. Okay, Connie, I can't tell if you have a hand up or not. It doesn't show if I did because I had a, I tried to do that star nine. I would I would agree. I just think there needs to be some way to protect uh, the neighbors and I don't want to short sight it. Some people want to have two or three of them in their neighborhood. That's great. I just think having the date or the amnesty part, I think we need to have a few more conditions. I think there's also, if they're in good standing, if, you know, it's not about first come, first serve, they still have to have 50%, you know, the neighbors might turn them all down. So I just, you know, that's not part of the criteria. But um, I just think that everybody's been operating without any, all these guidelines for a long time. And I think that the neighbors, in, to the point of what has been brought up, that the neighbors need some protection. Some neighbors want to have them, that's great. And if they want to limit it, and there's been problems, which in some neighborhoods there has been some problems. And it's not to cut out short-term rentals. They're here. We know that. We just want to make sure. And my concern is when we pass something, that we pass something that is as good as we can get for as many of the people. We're not going to play it all ends. I get that. But I do know that once you pass something, it's much more difficult to go back and probably amend it than it is just to get try to get it as right and take the time now. Mayor, that's all I have. Go ahead, Joe. Mayor, uh, 
as far as the amnesty goes, why don't we just uh, why don't we change the date until the final reading would be completed, which is two more council meetings. So if we made it July 1st, uh, I would think that that's a compromise instead of August, whatever Sue Ann had it down August 20th or August 30th. Right. Why, why don't we just make it July 1st? That's when if we would vote the first reading and then the second and the third reading over the next two council meetings. Um, I mean, it would it would go into effect basically July first. So I would I would change that to change the date to July first on the amnesty piece. Yes, and then the two five year you get it for five years, then you have to go back and ask for another five years. Everything else the staff has done, we've given direction to do that. I mean, not a lot of us are having complaints from our neighbors. I know that I haven't had any complaints from any of my neighbors and I have the biggest square mile ward that there is. So, I mean, I understand there's folks that have feel like they have problems with them. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Uh, but that's my motion. I would just let's just vote on it and see what happens. All right. So, um, are we, uh, is the 700 foot piece still in there and how are we doing that? I mean, we heard from uh, a couple of people that, uh, you know, if it was owner occupied, there could be uh, some variance to that. Uh, are we there or not? Uh, I, I want to just be clear on what your motion is. It, everything that's in there for staff, the 700 feet, it's all, it's all in there. The only thing we're changing is the date to July 1st, and instead of 10 years, it is five years. So it's everything that we directed staff to do the last time we had a discussion about it. After our February 20th, we had the long workshop. We decided what we wanted to do, and now we're going to come back, and we're going to tweak it a little bit, and we're going to do the first reading. And the other piece is the 10 years to the five years, right? Yes. Five years with an additional five years of age. Yes, five years with an additional five years. You have to go back to the board to ask for it. And Joe, did you, uh, and maybe this is Joe and Jeff, uh, the, um, to define owner occupied is X number of days. Is that is well, that in or out? I think owner. I think Sue Ann can address that. I mean, we we talked about it, it's it's in there. I mean, the owner occupied is is in there. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's. I don't think it's in there in terms of what you're voting on because it was struck in the version that is in front of us. So you would have to, you would have to, amend, or or make your motion to amend to to use the language that's already in there. Sue Ann, Ann's got speak. it. Did you? Uh, Sue Ann, can... Sue Ann, go ahead. She can't because she's muted herself, and I can't unmute her. Will you do that, Sue Ann? Okay, now you're available. Like... Thank you. Oh, thank you, uh, Mayor Cal Council. Um, I believe we can easily just put that 120 days a year that the owner has to live there back in. Um, that just makes sure that they use it as their primary residence. And I think that's all we're trying to do is get a definition. Um, if, if that's what council wishes. And that's Sue just Ann, in wanna... some neighborhoods, correct? That is in Sherman Hill. Okay. That is only in Sherman Hills. Correct. Yeah, that needs to, that needs to be in there. That's what we talked about. We agreed to that. That definitely needs to be part of part of it. If I need to make that part of the motion. I will make that part of the motion because we all agree that in Sherman Hills, it had to be owner occupied and we were going to meet that criteria. Correct. We didn't, we didn't think there would be um, a, a controversy on what the definition of owner occupied. I would have just said, you have to live in the house. Um, well, we can certainly put in a time that they're required to live in the house. I would assume that they have to live in the house, but if you guys want to make it 120 days, go ahead. It, well, I, I want to make it at least half a year. So 
so that it's their, well, their residents and not I a, would have made it the whole year, Josh, and they would have had to live there to have it a have it a rental. But you know, because, that's <laughs> Uh, that's what we agreed upon. But if you want to make it only six months, that's fine. Well, so that, uh, Joe, that would allow a person like uh, they go to Florida during the uh, yeah, okay, winter or go to Okoboji in the summer. So um, 100, 120 days is owner occupied. That that will need to be put in there, Sue Ann. And that is part of my motion. We can certainly do that. Okay, okay. Is, there, is everybody really everybody really clear if, what if, the motion is now? No, like if we're going to talk about 120 days, it was not what was. I, I want to clarify that piece. What the 120 days referred to that was that is in the ordinance now is the maximum number of days you can rent it out. 245 days is the number of days you have to live there for it to be owner occupied. I, I think we are talking because 120 days is you would only have to live there four months of four months of the year. I thought we were talking at least half a year, which would be 185 days. We want them to live there. We agreed that they would live there half the year. So if that's 185 days, Sue Ann, can you can you strike my 120 days and put it in there six months or Absolutely. half a year or 185 days or 186 days if it's a leap year? Certainly. Okay. Well, that'd be 184, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, oh gosh! Stop it! <laughs> we will say six months. How's that sound? I like that. Six months is good. Good six months. Okay. <laughs> is is everybody clear on what we're voting on now? Mr. Lester is going to tell us. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Just to make sure that I've got this correct, my understanding of Councilmember Gabba's motion. Uh, would be to approve uh, 53 and 53A uh, with the um, amendments uh, of 10 years to five years, but an opportunity to go back to the board after, for an additional five years at the conclusion of the five-year period. Um, 180 days uh, of owner occupation of the uh, of the home. We switch that to six months. To six <laughs> months, okay. Six months and then changing in the, Sherman Hills. Correct. 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 Okay. Okay. And uh, cha changing the amnesty date to July 1st from August 30. Yes, that is correct. You have it right, Mr. Lester. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's, uh, we have a um, motion on the table. And uh, we've discussed it. Uh, I would like the uh, clerk to please take roll. Gladly. County? Yes. Bozen? No. Voss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? No. Gatto. Yes. So that would be five yes, two no, motion carries. Okay, and so we are going to um, hear this back again on a uh, another vote at the next meeting. Okay. All right. Let's uh, move on to item 54. Item 54 is on East 29th Street rehabilitation from Easton Boulevard to Euclid Avenue, a resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file of bids and designating the lowest responsible bidder as Grimes Asphalt and Paving Corporation. Timothy Malicote, president, 
$496,721.63. Council communication number 20-218A is approving the contract and the bond and permission to sublet. Let's go ahead and we'll open the hearing and uh, anyone on council have any comments on this uh, East 29th Street rehabilitation? Seeing none, uh, anybody in the uh, public have any comments on this? There are none, Your Honor. All right, seeing none, can we get a motion? Yes, sir, I would make a motion to for 54 and 54A. All right, thank you. Would you poll the council, please? County. Yes. Bozen. Yes. Boss. Yes. Gray. Yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right, item 55 on the 2020 municipal building re roof, a resolution approving the plan specifications, form of contract documents engineer's estimate and the receive and the file of bids and designating the lowest responsible bidder as Central States Roofing Company, Mark H. Hansen, president, $222,200. Council communication number 20-219A is approving the contract and bond and permission to sublet. Go ahead and open the hearing on this item. Anybody have any comments on this? The 2020 municipal building re-roofing. I see no, Mr. Mayor. I'll move 55 and 55A. All right. 55, 55A has been moved. I don't see any comments. Do you, Kay? No, there are none. All right. Would you poll the council, please? County. Yes. Bozen. Yes. Boss. Yes. Gray. Yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. Item 56 is on the River Bend and King Irving sewer separation phase 3A. Resolution approving the plan, specifications, form of contract, documents, engineer's estimate, receive and file the bids and designating the lowest responsible bidder is Rogness Corp. Warren K. Rogness, President. $1,154,559. Council communication number 20-224A is approving the contract and the bond and permission to sublet. Let's open the hearing on this item. Council, any comments on this uh, River Bend King Irving sewer separation? <coughs> Seeing none, anyone in the general public have any comment on this project? I don't see any, Your Honor. Well, seeing none, right. Mr. Mayor, um, this is a, the continuing saga of Riverbend and King Irving sewer separation. And we hope to see the end of this sometime soon, but uh, I'm going to move 56 and 56A and proudly point out that there are no cents at the end of this bid. So, <laughs> oh, this is a good, clean one. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> All right, would you poll the council, please? Yes. <clears throat> yes. County? Yes. Bozen? Yes. Boss? Yes. Gray? Yes. Westergaard? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right, that completes the hearing, and let's note that it's 619. And let's uh, quickly go back to item 43, which is ending chapter two, article six, cross references uh, relating to boards, commissions, and agencies by eliminating the citizens odor board and odor appeals board. Council communication number 20 228. Let's go ahead and open. Uh, the discussion, see if anybody has any comments on this. 
Mr. Mayor, I would move item 43. All right, item 43 has been moved. Uh, any discussion by anyone? I would just make one comment that, uh, you know, there are continuing odor problems on occasion around the city. And uh, I think citizens need to know to whom they need to turn to make those uh, complaints and inquiries and try to figure out how it is that we get resolution. Would you go ahead and poll the council, please? County. Yes. Bozen. Yes. Boss. Yes. Gray. Yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Excuse me? Yes? Yes. Okay, I just yes. didn't hear you very clearly. Sorry. Gatto? Sir. Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right, item 44, uh, for those of you that get your pencils out, uh, this is amending sections 42 42-305, 42-306, 42-307, 42-308, 42-309, 42-310, 42-311, 42-314-342-317 and repealing 42-313, 315 and 42-316. These are relating to odor control. Nice work, mayor. Yeah, let's everybody uh, open it up and see if anybody has any uh, comments about all these sections relating to odor control. I see none, Mayor. I'll move 44. All right, 44 has been moved. Uh, you see anybody out there wants to make comment on this? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, go ahead and pull the council, please. County. Yes. Bozen. Yes. Boss. Yes. Gray. Yes. Westergaard. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Gatto. Yes. Your Honor, that's seven yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you all. That brings us to an end of our agenda. I want to thank you all for doing everything that we can to uh, help protect our citizens. Uh, let's all stay safe, stay healthy, uh, try to stay home as much as you can, uh, social distance, and let's keep protecting our family and our friends. And, and uh, hopefully we're going to get by this, this COVID. Uh, could somebody give me a motion to adjourn? No. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks. Opposition. Hearing none, we sit adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you and good night.